Rupa, and I am a self-driven design researcher, which has made me come here and talk about design thinking today. How about design thinking? The basic thing which I did was put every possible keyword in the internet to learn more about it. And what I found was, some said, it was a process. Some said, it was a, an activity. Some said, it was a protocol. Some say it is an expression, a mode of thought, a mindset, I don't know what all. So, you know, what happened was, it all made me feel very confused. And there was one thing which I, you know, kind of figured out that there is no this definition to design thinking. It is a perception to which can vary from individual to individual. These are a few things which I really like and so I've put across to share. Design thinking is said to be a process which has redefining the problem, need finding, ideation, prototyping and usability testing as its factors. Somewhere it has been said it is a balance between business and art, structure and chaos, intuition and logic concept and execution. Well, when we talk about thinking, I find it really vague to measure. I cannot understand if it has got a beginning or an end. But here, when I was studying about this, it said it is a structured method with clearly defined milestones over a project timeline. When we say, say it is a design thinking, we are, when we are thinking about something, it, is, it has got to have a an outcome. An outcome is considered to be a tangible product because it has to be out there right with the users to use. So we need to have a tangible product which could be, you know, experienced and out for testing for results. When you were a kid, if you flip back, uh, well, if you flip back your pages of history, go back to your childhood, when you we when we were really small, we had a variety of modes to represent our ideas. We made those sand castles, we made, we made pictures using crayons, and we also made clay modeling and things like that. But now, when we have narrowed down, it has just come to a pen or a pencil? Well, design thinking opens it up for you. It says you can use any kind of you know, more any kind of tools which you like, which could, which you think you could help in representing your ideas. So these are a few things which are considered as design thinking tools. These are not fixed. You could add them your own way of doing it. But when we say we are creating something, it, we have to have inputs, we have to have a designing process, and we have to have an outcome which could be put out for testing. So, for input, we have interviews, we could have use other methods as well. Brainstorming, sketching, wireframing, prototyping, etc. can accommodate our design process. And usability testing, of course, we need to have a tangible product, which is, which I mentioned earlier, so we need a usable testing as well. Well, if, you know, human needs is, um, is a place to start and prototyping and wireframing are vehicles to progress, then we ought to talk about some kind of destination. Usually, you know, taking in the earlier phase, it is always a concept of a consumer and a producer. So whatever we created was consumed. Instead, design thinking is a beginning which kind of it helps you in exploring the potential of participation. So, wh whoever all in the process, everybody is a participant in the whole, you know, in creating the whole experiences, which could create better products, which could be more meaningful, more profitable, more productive. Yeah, and when I say so, we ought to balance, we ought to have a balance between desirability, functional feasibility, technical feasibility, and economic viability. So we need to create products which can be out in the market and people can be used, people can use them. So when we are creating, when we are, you know, designing, 
Everything has to evolve. We, as human beings, have also evolved from generations. So, an evolution has to happen out of experience, maybe out of observation, maybe out of motivation. But this evolution has to be ensured that it is properly communicated to people because they are the ones who are using it. They have to have proper visual cues. This made me remember one of the incidents which happened yesterday when we checked in our hotel room. Uh, my brother, he just picked up a towel. Uh, he, he just picked up a floor mat and said, why is the towel lying on the floor? Visual cues. What, what I take from it is, there, there might be two things. One, that the design of that floor mat is not enough to communicate that this is a floor mat and not a towel. And he, uh, to my surprise, has never seen a white kind, white colored floor mat. So, you know, and the second thing might be you could also use your floor mat as a towel if you prefer doing that. <laughs> so, it has to be properly visually cued so people could understand what is happening around. Emotion. My friend here, Manoj Samuel, two presentations earlier, very well described, very well explained what was emotional design. So it all, you know, some applications we see, we say, wow, what an experience. And some, whoa, that was really hectic to do. So similarly, it also, have, you know, kinds of effects our own emotion, affect our decision. So two weeks ago, I was in Big Bazaar store and they said, uh, buy products up to 5,000 and get 600 rupees off for next year. So there was a big banner put in that. And you know, it said, buy for next two days and get one year free purchase. But it was not exactly that. I had to purchase till 5,000 and then I'll get only 50 rupees per month for next 12 days. But still, when they put it across that way, I was full, you know, I, it kind of helped me in making my purchase decision. Even Flipkart, Amazon, which is the big billion days which are happening. You kind of you are forced to take a decision like I do not really want to buy this product this point of time, but since I'm getting a sale, I'm getting it at low price. I would not, you know, kind of postpone it for later purchase, praying higher. Those kind of things are kind of emotion. So even you know we have variety of such online stores, Amazon, Flipkart, Snapdeal, etc., etc., etc. But people would prefer some kind of I mean. I like Amazon in particular, so I always purchase from Amazon. Maybe it may have a two or three percent difference in prices because I like the experience, I like the aesthetic appeal. So those kind of things really matter. Coming to values and culture, if you have seen these days for the Wali occasion, you can see Amata Bachchan's ad very much. Kuch Meetha ho jaye, there will be It's like. Everybody out there knows that we, being Indians, celebrate our festivals with sweets. So that is a very good way of communicating, you know, his concept, his product, I mean, the, the Dharma product with the cultural lives. So, discussing that, we also need to know how, what kind of users we are dealing with. It can be novice, it can be intermediate, it can be expert. Now, are the people who really, you know, um, need a uh, helping hand to use any kind of product. My dad, he has just created his Facebook account. I know he doesn't know how to send a friend request. And at the same time, experts. So I've seen my friends playing Farmville and other such games online where they kind of really feel connected themselves. And intermediate users, they are on the gray area. You can, you know, towards this or towards this. Well, when talking about novice, intermediate and expert users, it is all based on the previous experiences, previous tasks which they have done. That is a kind of skill level, skill set which they have developed. So, for, for a novice user, it is taking the curve to learn. And at the same time, for an expert user, they have reached a kind of level where they are expecting challenges, more and more challenges. So, if an expert, uh, expert user is given these kind of tasks, he'll feel bored about it. Whereas, if for a novice user, we can get a higher challenging task, he'll feel frustrated about it. So, whenever we are designing, we have to keep in mind this creative flow. So, for if, in every application, there has to have something which even novice could use. It should not hamper their experience as well of learning.
learning new things and at the same time it should not create you know boredom to expert users so you know when i have defined that saying we have to have a creative flow and you know we would and assume that our product has launched in market we could categorize the same users into these five so they are innovators early adopters early majority late majority and laggards what and these are the percentage of their accepting a product innovators they are risk takers they are well informed they know there is a product to be you know out there and they do not mind you know standing on a line and buying it being the first one to buy it they be happy about it at the same time the early adopters they are a kind of people who are who would take their purchase decisions based on what innovators you know kind of recommend similarly goes for early majority they do not take any risk they are very safe players so they would uh, be, they would take their decision based on recommendations from all those who have used these people are ones who are, who would use really common products so if it is out in market everybody has been using it only then they will prefer buying it and the laggards laggards are people who are you know can of restrict themselves from changes so they will be out buying it only when the when the traditional alternative is really not available in the market so when we say this users and when we define you know levels of users so we also have to take care of the complexity because that is what defines their skill set so you know these are kind of things but i would mention is uh, don't make me think is steve trucks really beautiful book and inspired from that um, i've also learned that you know earlier there was a rule called three to two rule which said Every anybody should be able to identify whatever he is looking on a site in a, within three clicks. But now it has been said it can, the clicks can be numerous, but the only thing we have to take care is that those clicks should be mindless. So if you do not have to think, if the user do not have to think, they they won't mind clicking on more. And we, we have to keep it straight and simple. Yeah, saying that, saying that, you know. uh the a design should be simple for everybody to understand i would also say that no design is simple i'm contradicting myself right if you use but like we have a law of conservation of energy similarly we have a law of conservation of complexity tesla's law which says which states every application has an inherent amount of irreducible complexity the question is who will have to deal with it the user the application developer or the platform developer so what we see is that the complexity is all in there so we have to see where we are asking the front end or the users to take care of it or we are handling it at the back end when we talk about complexity this is the most everyday example i face is using a microwave oven earlier we just had to you have two knobs one for time and one for temperature but now you know when we have grown based on type of food based on type of cooking we have so many options that it at times really makes me confusing what to do next so when we are designing we have to have a scope this is the this is the boundary of my application who all are will be there who are my stakeholders how much is too much how much if i provide to them will be too much for them what should i give what should i put in there and what should i not similarly where how why which the whole w family is a part of here so what we say finally is empathy define ideate prototype test these are the steps within these steps problems can be framed right questions can be asked more more ideas can be created and the best answers can be chosen so conclusively what i say is design thinking is a human power human power to conceive to plan to represent to put in place a uh, a human problem a human need which has which has been arrived either individually or collectively every design has to have a purpose and it is a human power so everybody inside us have it uh, 
I would end by saying one of the very many very common questions which I you know come up every day. When you talk about design, what exactly do you do? Where do you apply it? And you know, after thinking, what I said was uh, inspired from Amir Khan. I said, pen ke nip se, pan ke zip tak, har cheez mein design hai. And I do not mean it about, from machine's perspective, but I, what I mean is everything around us is a design. It's just your perception, it's just your observation, how you perceive it makes all the difference. Thank you.